name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. And the grace and peace of our Lord Jesus Christ, the love of God, and the communion of the Holy Spirit be with all of you. In the waters of baptism, Giuseppe died with Christ and rose with him to new life. May he share with him eternal glory. In baptism, in baptism, Giuseppe put on Christ. May he bring this baptismal garment to everlasting life. In baptism, Giuseppe put on the cross of Christ. May he bring this cross to resurrection. There are just no words that could take away what you're going through. I also welcome all of you here. Many of you I am welcoming home to Sacred Heart St. Stephen's. Some I'm welcoming for the first time. So I welcome you here, whether you are Catholic or not, believer or not, have difficulties with faith or even with God, you are welcomed here today to pray each in his or in her own way for the repose of the soul of Giuseppe. With that in mind, I also want to welcome Don Luigi, Don Luigi Porto de Luna from the Church of, of Our Lady of Pompeii in New York. He is here today. And also Deacon Gamba, who is also known to the family here. So we welcome everyone here today. Let us pray silently now for this family and for Giuseppe. God of our ancestors in faith, by the covenant made at Mount Sinai, you taught your people to strengthen the bonds of family through faith, through honor, and love. Look kindly on Giuseppe, a father, a husband, a friend, 
person who serves his community very well. Bring him now to his heavenly rest, where with the saints he may dwell with the blessed in peace. And we ask this through Christ our Lord. A reading from the book of Ecclesiastes. There is an appointed time for everything, and a time for every affair under the heavens, a time to give birth, and a time to die, a time to plant, and a time to uproot the plant, a time to kill, and a time to heal, a time to tear down, and a time to build, a time to weep, and a time to laugh, a time to mourn, and a time to dance, a time to scatter stones, and a time to gather them, a time to embrace, and a time to be far from embraces, a time to seek and a time to lose, a time to keep and a time to cast away, a time to rend and a time to sow, a time to be silent and a time to speak, a time to love and a time to hate, a time of war and a time of peace. The word of the Lord.
reading from the first letter of St. Paul to the Corinthians. Brothers and sisters, strive eagerly for the greatest spiritual gifts, but I shall show you a still more excellent way. If I speak in human and angelic tongues, but do not have love, I am a resounding gong and a clashing cymbal. And if I have the gift of prophecy and comprehend all mysteries and all knowledge, if I have all faith so as to move mountains, but do not have love, I am nothing. If I give away everything I own, and if I hand my body over so that I may boast, but do not have love, I gain nothing. Love is patient, love is kind. It is not jealous, it is not pompous. It is not inflated, it is not rude. It does not seek its own interest. It is not quick-tempered, it is not brood over injury. It does not rejoice over wrongdoing, but rejoices with the truth. It bears all things, believes all things, hopes all things, endures all things. Love never fails. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. and believes in me will never die. Do you believe this? She said to him, Yes, Lord. I have come to believe that you are the Christ, the Son of God, the one who is coming into the world. The Gospel of the Lord. Praise to you, Lord Jesus Christ.
What I'd like to do this morning is pick up some of the things we left off from last night. And I'd like to weave these readings together. Having spoken, having, having spoken with Pietro and the people of this parish and so many others who have had great and wonderful adjectives to describe Giuseppe. I'd like to look at the second reading for a moment. When I heard the story of the things that Giuseppe did, not only for the teams, not only for Florentina, but his passion, his passion, yes, for the sport of soccer, but his passion for the players, for young kids, for children, was of special needs. You see, that second reading speaks about love. <clears throat> Many times we hear it at weddings, but it speaks about love, love that gives a great deal of energy. Therese Lassure said, if there wasn't any love, we would not have saints, we would not have martyrs, we would not have teachers, we would not have people who were filled with passion to accomplish so many things. And we wonder where and how did all this possibly happen? Because there's passion. There was passion for life. Passion for doing things, as we said last night, in a very big way to include lots of people. To include lots of people. So that love that we saw there, for his family, sometimes he was dad, most of the time. Other times he was Joe, and still other times he was Mr. Barone. But never did he get those three mixed up. And as I had said at the wake last night, the word that he was described as a humble man, not puffed up, not a person who forgot his roots, and he was always seen as one of us, as one of us, even though he was very important. His importance accrued not from the position, but from the way in which he used that position to assist and to help others. So when we speak about love, we don't always speak about everything being sugar and spice and everything nice. We speak about love that is truthful, that sees a need and takes care of it as much as he, or poss much as he can. We speak about love as being a passion for something. And in this case, a passion for you, passion for so many of you who are here, the passion for all those people in Italy, the passion for so many people who filed past his casket. This was a people person, a people person. Now let's look at that first reading. That first reading, you know this first reading, you've heard it many times. A time to be born, a time to die, a time for peace, a time for war, a time. Time is all we have. We're given a certain amount of time. What we do with that time determines how we spent it and how we define who we are. Now, I wish for him and for you that that time was longer, longer. But sometimes life can't be measured only by time. It's also measured by how we used what time we had. And last night I had mentioned that idea of mercy, 
mercy. He used the time he had to build lives for so many other people. I don't know how this man did this. I don't know how he possibly can handle the stress of so many things going on at the same time. Passion. And that was consuming. When you are in love with what you do, you never go to work a day in your life. Why? Because this is your life. This is who he was. With what, what he did, let me get this straight, what he did was who he was. And this is a great blessing. And so what did we learn from his life? Oh my goodness, I think I would like to speak with his children in about a month from now when we could put together who and what and what's going on, because this is a tough time. You've come from Italy, you're exhausted. But what did you learn? I could tell you, when I heard this, grab every moment, live it with passion, and if you are in love with what you are and who you are, you could serve and make so many other people very happy. He did this. Now I want to go to the gospel. That gospel is a rough gospel. It's rough because it asks us a lot of questions. It is now Tuesday in Holy Week, so we are out maybe five days from Easter. Yeah, five days from Easter. It's Holy Week. My goodness, what a time to celebrate life, and to celebrate what we believe is life everlasting. Let's look at the text. Let's look at this text. In this text, Martha, Mary, Lazarus, these are friends of Jesus. They lived in Bethany. Jesus frequented their house. These were friends of Jesus. They weren't part of the 12. But Lazarus dies. And here we go. What is she going through? What are her feelings at this moment? I think she kind of gives an inkling when Jesus shows up to make the shiva call. This is a Jewish family. And when he arrives, what does she do? She doesn't say hello. She doesn't say thank you for coming. She says, if you were here, this would not have happened. How do we feel? In your hearts now, I'm sure, there are a multiplicity of feelings and emotions all colliding and happening simultaneously. She's angry. She's disappointed. They were friends. Jesus hears it. He absorbs it. And then consoles her by saying something very interesting. But Martha, I am the resurrection and the life. I am that. And she says, I know he will rise on the last day. But Martha, I am the resurrection and the life. Do you believe this? Notice she doesn't answer very quickly. She says, yes. I have come to believe this. Let's talk. Why are we here? Why are we here? We're here because Giuseppe lived. Not because he died. He lived. You touched every one of you and other people. He lived. 
He made a mark. He taught you something. He lived. And he lived well with passion and with love. If only we could do the same. Why are we here? We are here because every Sunday morning, whether it is Advent or Lent, whether it is Easter or the middle of the summer, we say the creed. Sometimes I think we kind of skip through it. We don't know what we're saying. But the very last lines of the creed, I believe in the resurrection of the dead and life of the world to come. That's why you had the celebration of the Eucharist in Italy. That's why we're doing this here today. Because somehow, because of the great feast we're ready to celebrate in a few days, we believe in the resurrection of Jesus. Does this take away the hurt? Not really. Will it take away the hurt? Eventually. Will we grieve? Yes. Will we tell the stories? Yes. Will we weep? Yes. But with hope. With hope. That life is not ended, but changed. Changed for him, and changed for you, and changed for all of us. And through that change, through that upsetment, through that agony, through all the questions, through all of the emotions, in there, there is that question. Pietro, do you believe that I am the resurrection of the dead? Salvatore, do you believe that I am the resurrection? Giuseppe, do you believe that I am the resurrection of the dead? And as we answer that question every day, sometimes it will be easy, sometimes it won't, but how we answer that will get us through this time of mourning. This is why I, my colleagues, always say, even when it's difficult to hear. You have to come to Mass on Sunday. Why? Because this is where Jesus is. The Jesus who holds all of us in this church today, holds Giuseppe and all those who we believe on the other side. And when we come together to celebrate the Eucharist, in some way, we're all together again. That's where we find our hope. This man was a believer. He was Catholic. He had the faith. And he had the passion for life. What will you do now to the family? Tell these stories. And each time you tell the story, ask yourself, what did I learn? What was the lesson? Parents love their children. They do. Good parents love their children. We don't realize they don't sit down with a book and say, okay, lesson one, I'm going to teach you this. Lesson two, I'm going to teach you that. They don't do that. We learn by osmosis. And then we realize, oh my God, my father taught me this. Oh, I learned this in where I lived. I learned these values. I learned how to do this. I learned what's important. 
and I learned what questions to ask. But as you tell the story of who your father is, not was, is, ask yourself, what lesson is here? Because what does a parent do? In the end, a parent would give his life for his children. That in itself tells you a great deal of how to live. Tell these stories. And one other thing, one other thing. When I was told this when I was a teenager, I screamed. Mirror, mirror on the wall. We are our parents, after all. Now when it's said, I say, thank God. So today, give thanks for his life, for all these people, for the effect that he had, and say, my father's life was worth living. This, if there is success, this is it. This is it. Someone says to you, this is a kind man, a humble man, a person filled with passion for life. Well, I wish someone would say that about me. I'd say that's success. So, look at these texts. Answer that question every day. Do you believe this? Realize that time and life is not always measured in the same way. And he left you the ingredients on how to love. Brothers and sisters, Christ Jesus is risen from the dead and sits at the right hand of the Father, where he intercedes for us as church, confident that God hears the voices of those who trust in the Lord. We join our prayers to his. The response is, Lord, hear our prayer. In baptism, Giuseppe received the light of Christ, shattered the darkness and now lead him over the waters of death. We pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. Our brother Giuseppe was nourished at the table of the Savior. Welcome him into the halls of the heavenly banquet. We pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. Our brother Giuseppe shared in the priesthood of Jesus Christ, leading God's people in prayer and worship bringing him into the, your presence where he will take his place in the heavenly liturgy. We pray to the Lord. Lord. May friends and may members of his family have gone before us and await the kingdom. Grant them an everlasting home with your son. Lord, hear our prayer. Lord, hear our prayer. We pray for the family and friends of Giuseppe that seek comfort and consoli 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 consolidation. Heal their pain and dispel the darkness and doubt that come from grief. We pray to the Lord. Father, giver of peace and healer of souls, hear the prayers of the Redeemer Christ Jesus and the voices of your people whose lives were purchased at the blood of the Lamb. 
Forgive our sins and all who, of all who sleep in Christ and grant them a place in your kingdom through Christ our Lord.
Pray, everyone, that our sacrifice may be acceptable to God, our Almighty Father. As we humbly present to you these sacrificial offerings for the salvation of your servant Giuseppe, we beseech your mercy that he who did believe in Jesus as his loving Savior may find in Christ a merciful judge who lives and reigns forever and ever. The Lord be with you. Lift up your hearts. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is truly right and just, our duty and our salvation, always and everywhere to give you thanks, Lord, Holy Father, Almighty and Eternal God, through Christ our Lord. In Christ, the hope of a blessed resurrection is dawned, that those saddened by the certainty of dying might be consoled by the promise of immortality to come. Indeed, for your faith-filled people, Lord, life is changed, not ended. And when this earthly dwelling turns to dust, an eternal dwelling is made ready. And so with all the angels and the archangels, the thrones and dominions, with the hosts and the powers of heaven, we too sing the hymn of your glory as without end we acclaim may be offered to your name. Therefore, Father, we humbly implore you, by that same Spirit, graciously make holy these gifts we have brought to you for consecration, that they may become the body and blood of your Son, our Lord Jesus the Christ, at whose command we celebrate these mysteries. For in the night he was betrayed, he himself took bread, Giving you thanks, he said the blessing. He broke the bread, gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and eat of it, for this is my body, which will be given up for you. supper was ended, he took the chalice, and giving you thanks, he said the blessing, gave the chalice to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and drink from it, for this is the chalice of my blood, the blood of the new and eternal covenant, which will be poured out for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. Do this in memory of me.
Son, his wondrous resurrection and ascension into heaven, and as we look forward to his second coming, we offer you in thanksgiving this holy and living sacrifice. Look, we pray upon the oblation of your church, and recognizing the sacrificial victim by whose death you will to reconcile us to yourself, grant that we, who are nourished by the body and blood of your Son and filled with this Holy Spirit, may become one body, one spirit in Christ. Lo Spirito Santo faccia di noi un'offerta perenne a te gradita, perché possiamo ottenere il regno promesso con i tuoi eletti, con la Beata Maria, Vergine e Madre di Dio, San Giuseppe e suo Sposo, i tuoi Santi Apostoli, i gloriosi martiri e tutti i Santi, nostri intercessori presso di te. Ti preghiamo, Padre, questo sacrificio della nostra riconciliazione doni pace e salvezza al mondo intero. Conferma nella fede e nell'amore la tua Chiesa, pellegrina sulla terra, il tuo servo e nostro Papa Francesco, il nostro Vescovo Robert, l'Ordine Episcopale, i Presbiteri, i Diaconi e il popolo che tu eri dentro. Ascolta la preghiera di questa famiglia che hai convocato alla tua presenza. Ricongiungi a te, Padre misericordioso, tutti i tuoi figli ovunque dispersi. Ricordati del nostro fratello Giuseppe, che oggi hai chiamato a te da questa vita, e come per il battesimo lo hai unito alla morte di Cristo tuo figlio, così rendilo partecipe della sua risurrezione, quando egli farà sorgere i morti dalla terra e trasfigurerà il nostro corpo mortale per conformarlo al suo corpo glorioso. Accogli nel tuo regno i nostri fratelli e sorelle defunti e tutti coloro che in pace con te hanno lasciato questo mondo. Concedi anche a noi di ritrovarci insieme a godere della tua gloria quando, asciugata ogni lacrima, i nostri occhi vedranno il tuo volto e noi saremo simili a te e canteremo per sempre la Tua lode in Cristo nostro Signore, per mezzo del quale, Tuo Dio, doni al mondo ogni bene. Per Cristo, con Cristo e in Cristo, a Te, Dio Padre Onnipotente, nell'unità dello Spirito Santo, ogni onore e gloria per Tu, gave us simultaneously, parte nostre, and in English, let us pray, our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name, thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us, and lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from Deliver us, Lord, we pray, from every evil. Graciously grant peace in our days, that by the help of your mercy, we may always be free from sin and safe from all distress, as we wait the blessed hope, the coming of our Savior, Jesus Christ. For the kingdom, the power, and the glory are yours, now and forever. Lord Jesus Christ, who said to your apostles, Peace I leave you, my peace I give you, Look not on our sins, but on the faith of your church, and graciously grant us peace and unity in accordance with your will, who live and reign forever and ever. The peace of the Lord be with you always.
Behold the Lamb of God, behold him who takes away the sins of the world. Blessed are they who will call to the supper of the Lamb. Lord, I am not worthy that you should enter under my roof, but only say the word and my soul shall be healed.
Let us pray. Father, Jesus left us in the sacrament of the Eucharist, his body and blood as food for the journey through life, through death, to new life. Mercifully grant that strengthened by this Eucharist, our brother may come to the eternal table of Christ, who lives and reigns forever and ever. Amen. Kindly be seated, Pietro. There's a step over here. Joe always made me do things I didn't want to do. And here I am again doing it. I love them and his beautiful family like you have no idea. He was a visionary, always thinking about the future. He planned it with his imagination and wisdom. He built an army, the Joe Barone army, with people that shared his beliefs and dreams. He was always positive and driven to make the impossible become a reality. I met Joe the same way everyone here met him, through the wonderful sport that we all love. In 1976, I was 13 years old, and I started to play soccer. Joe was only 10, and we found each other at a club here in Brooklyn called Calabria Roma. When everybody thinking that Joe was thinking about soccer, he already knew that he would begin an amazing love story like no other, with the only love of his life, Camille. Sal DeMarco, who constantly kept trying to find his daughter because she was always running around. And uh, he would ask me, Lucio, you seen Camila? And I would always cover up for Joe. I go, yeah, she stepped outside. But meanwhile, either she was in a phone booth or uh, downstairs in the basement of the club or anywhere that had a chance to be alone. Uh, at uh, 14 years old, Joe was living in downtown Brooklyn while Camille lived in Mill Basin. And how would they be able to, be, to see each other, you know? And uh, I was dating the love of my life, and I introduced Pat to Camille. And they were both attending St. Edmunds High School. For three years, I drove and picked up all three of them. I lived in Seagate, and then I went to pick up Pat, Bensonhurst, Camille, the Milk Basin, and Joe finally here downtown Brooklyn. We would go to the movies, a diner, and then I would have to drive them all the way back home. Did that for three years, and I would do it for a lifetime. Joe went to St. Francis College, where he was an extremely talented soccer player. Better than me, I can tell you that much. Uh, but he was not satisfied the way the game was progressing. He was never happy playing the sport. He quickly discovered that as a coach, he would have more authority and control to move on. While Joe was coach coaching youth teams, once he felt that they were on their way, I would get the call. Lucio, I need a favor. I knew what that meant. It means I would have to go there and Joe will move on to the next team. But I'm glad he did that, because I see those kids. <laughs> I see those kids here with their families, and they're beautiful families, and I'm sure they're doing everything that Joe and I want them to do. 
And Joe constantly did that. He kept moving on, project after project. He made me meet the Greek Americans, rivals. I didn't want to play for, uh, coach the Greek Americans. I go, Joe, we're Italian. And he goes, Lucio, don't worry. They're good people. They're like us. And again, more relationships, more friendships. Amazing. Brooklyn Knights, Brooklyn Italians, Brooklyn, Brooklyn Fathers, you name it. It was Joe Barone's way of getting people together. For 25 plus years, three families, the Barones, the Russos, and the Catanzaros will go on an annual skiing trip in the Poconos. I don't think we skied once in those 25 years. <laughs> All we wanted to do is stay together. Gasper and I cooked. Joe Barone ate and slipped. <laughs> then he would just get up with all his energy and provoke the kids. Let's go outside. Let's do a snowball fight, you know. Let's sledding, anything. That's who Joe was. But our kids loved it, and we had a tremendous time. Uh, the best part was definitely when Joe and Emily would play pranks on each other. I'm only going to say one, one thing because I'm in church and I don't want to get in trouble. Uh, Joe, after taking a shower, came out in his usual towel, wrapped around him, rubbing his stomach. Me, where are my underwears? And uh, we would all laugh because the night before, my friend Emily would put him up in the tree and they would be frozen solid. <laughs> and Joe couldn't wear anything. Uh, the priest said if there was one word that best described Joe, what would it be? And it, it, he said humble, 1,000% Joe was humble, honest, charismatic, generous, definitely heroic. He was all of those and more. Joe was everything. Where he was currently, let's see, Joe, this past week, they honored Joe in two cities, in Florence and Pozzallo, in Pozzallo, Sicily, where I had the pleasure of being there three times in three years. Who would have ever thought that I would go to Pozzalo, but I'm in, I went to Pozzalo, and I love it. And I will go back as long as uh, the Barones want me there. I'll be there every year, as, as many years as possible. I learned to say my first phrase in Sicilian, and that came from Joe's mom, Concettina. Giuseppe, pizza giavando Joe. <laughs> I think it means place the key on the nail, but you never know. To achieve his dream, Joe got an opportunity through his friends when he met Rocco Camiso, a self-made, amazing, humble, successful man, and quickly gained his trust. Joe's dream was to be a part of a professional soccer team, and he did all that and more with class, style, and commitment. We share his dream through him with the Army that he built, and the love for the game. What's next, you might ask? Personally, I wouldn't be surprised if he was talking to St. Peter's right now and organizing a game between heaven and hell. <laughs> An open tournament between the angels and demons, the apostles and the immortali, and so on. Rest in peace, my friend. I'm proud of you, I love you, and your army loves you. Thank you. Joe was a brother that I never had. He was always there for me when I needed him. Whether it was to make sure I was picked on a team for the 13 on 13 pickup games at Bay 8th, or guidance on playing soccer in college because he played, at, played and graduated from St. Francis College. To advice on marrying the girl from Avenue N, Danielle, who we loved. He was by my side throughout my whole life. Not only because he was married to my sister, but because he was the brother that I needed. The 
The past week has been incredibly tough for me, and one of the hardest I've ever faced. When Camille called to deliver the devastating news about Joe, I was at a loss. Despite feeling overwhelmed, I knew I had a channel. Joe's strength and resilience. Coaching a game that day, I struggled to focus, but I asked myself, what would Joe do? I finished the game, called Camille multiple times, and went to see Peter, Gabriella, Salvatore, and Joey. Initially hesitant to travel to Milan because I truly believed Joe, like any obstacle in his way, he would overcome this. Even now, I find myself constantly asking, what would Joe do? As I navigate the loss, while friends reached out with messages of support, my priority remained, remained clear, to be a pillar of strength for Joey, Salvatore, Gabriella, Peter, and Camille. You either rode the train with Joe or got off. I, of course, had no choice. I was with him for all the rides. There were plenty of times, as per Joe, we had to roll up our sleeves and do it ourselves, and that's what we did. I want to honor Joe's remarkable contributions to soccer in New York City and beyond. Joe transformed the Brooklyn Italian Soccer Club, which only had a successful men's program, to starting the successful youth sector. He was the chairman of the NPSL Soccer League for many years and grew that league to make it a rival to the United States Soccer League, always fighting for the NPSL to have a higher status. He then went on to become the chairman of the New York Cosmos, the historic New York Cosmos. His last stop was not in New York, but in Italy at Fiorentina, the Serie A team that my father always supported. What he did there was spectacular, and seeing firsthand how the people of Florence embraced him and then remembered him will be with me forever. Though the footprints he left at these organizations were enormous, he left more than a footprint to a few boys from Brooklyn. What Joe did for us on and off the field will never be forgotten. He, cre he created teams with us when we were teenagers that today would be considered academy teams. He would schedule scrimmages for us and invite college coaches, which today would be a college showcase. He would take us to some of the best tournaments in the world, and he did this all for us because he believed in us and we believed in him, and we, and we still do. The bond he created with us will never be forgotten. When the news came out about Joe, there was an outpouring of people telling me stories and, description, and describing Joe as they saw and knew him. I want to share some of those words that were used to describe him. Maurice described him as charismatic. Jack used mentor. Joe Guastella said sacrifice. Tommy Troya, amazing. Johnny and Alan used the words indispensable and relentless. Vinny said he was the absolute best, and Filippo used only one word to describe Joe. He was the king. He cared for us when no one else did, believed in us when no one else did, and watched over us when no one else did. Growing up in Brooklyn posed its challenges, but Joe ensured we stayed on the right path. Our friendship nurtured by Joe's influence is un un unparalleled. Since the late 90s, our annual dinners were filled with timeless stories and endless laughter, a testament to Joe's lasting impact. He was not just a role model to us, but an even greater one to our children. Some were fortunate to witness his achievements in Florence, a testament to his leadership and vision. As a mentor, teacher, and role model, Joe's influence and wisdom shaped us into the men we are today. Joe was a son, husband, a father, a brother, an uncle, and an uncle. Joe, whose warmth and love knew no bounds, whether you were bound by blood or marriage, you were family in his eyes. Joe had a rare gift of making everyone feel welcomed and cherished, regardless of their relationship to him. Joe was like a brother to me and like a son to my mother. She loved him like her own, and he loved her the same. He fit right in 
whether he was busting her chops or eating her sauce. As much as she would shrug him off or gently slap his arm, her, along with all of us here, wish he was around to bust chops one last time. I will also never forget what Joe has done for my father. Like every Italian man, my father is a lifelong die-hard fan of the game and spent most of his life watching from a recliner in his basement. Joe took him to Florence to watch the team train and play and allowed my father to spend time with the players he was a fan of. He gave my father a memory he'll cherish forever and will never forget that. As a brother-in-law, my sisters being sister-in-laws to Joe, we were embraced as part of his inner circle, woven into the fabric of his immediate family. He understood the true meaning of family, extending his love and support without hesitation or reservation. He fostered a sense of unity and belonging, creating lasting memories that me and my sisters will never forget, like taking us to his hometown of Pozzallo and ringing in the new year with pots and pans on his porch. Joe was the epitome of a family man, always ensuring everyone felt included, whether it was during holiday gatherings, pizza nights, or block parties. He radiated joy and light, infusing every room, laughter, and fun. His love for his wife, my sister Camille, was, was boundless. Truly amazing, truly an amazing testament to his unwavering de devotion. Joe's humor and playful spirit made him the life of the party, and his quick wit and humor brought a smile to all who knew him. He cherished his role as Uncle Joe, greeting his, niece, greeting his nieces as Bella, and checking in on his nephews with the trademark question, you scoring? Joe's generosity and love knew no bounds, especially when it came to bringing joy to the children in the family. Year after year, he donned the red suit of Santa Claus, sometimes even without a shirt, to create cherished moments, uh, memories for his great nieces, great nephews, and grandson. Though this time with us was too short, Joe's legacy would, was Joe's legacy as the ultimate family man and Santa Claus will live in our, in our hearts forever. We promise to keep his spirits alive and remind the kids there will never be a Santa Claus like Uncle Joe. I will always be grateful of the memories we shared, whether, whether they were on the field, in the dim-lit Brooklyn Italian clubhouse, or sat around the table at my mom's. Uncle Joe has done a lot of incredible things and is remembered for changing the landscape of soccer here in the United States and creating a different culture for soccer in Florence. But the greatest thing my brother-in-law has ever created it took place in Diker Heights. But the greatest thing my brother-in-law ever created took place in the house at Diker Heights, Brooklyn. The greatest thing my brother-in-law ever created are his four children, who will carry his legacy and his name forever. Thank you. As I begin, I want to express my heartfelt gratitude for the love and support that my family and I have received from each and every one of you. It has been a beacon of light during these dark days. Today marks one week since we lost our dad, since we shared our last goodbye. In the days following, I found myself longing for more time for moments that now can never be, like walking me down the aisle 
leaving his future grandchildren, being my dance partner every day. That wasn't supposed to be how my dad walked me down the aisle today. So what about me, dad? In a conversation with my cousin Pasquale before the funeral in Florence, I asked him, how will I survive today? And he responded, I think you'll ask yourself that every day for a long time. And he's there. You and your brothers are him in the most beautiful way possible. Look at yesterday, look at today, and how many people show up. It's not easy. And people are gonna call him all types of things. A good man, a legend, this and that, but you, you got to call him your dad. Wear it like your favorite dress. You're one of the toughest people I know, so you'll get through it. I think now it's heavy and it will be for a while because you can't talk to him. But as these days pass, the trees will seem greener. The breeze will start to feel good and the sky will have a tint of purple in it. And that's him. He loved to be around the people he loved and hated that he couldn't do it all the time. This was just his crazy way of doing it and now you just gotta stop and look for him. But today be with your brothers. The closer you are to them, the closer you are to him. And when you feel strong, hug your mother. But it's okay to cry, because tears are all the love that you never got to show him. My dad had a vibrant spirit and boundless love. His presence lit up every room he entered and his smile could warm the coldest heart. He was a beacon of humility, kindness, and an amazing role model. He lights up every single room he walks into and just has the most infectious smile. I'm proud of all of his accomplishments. I'm proud of all the lives that he's touched. But most importantly, I'm proud that I get to call him my dad. Thank you, dad. Thank you for showing me the meaning of true love. My mom and dad are the definition of soulmates the truest love you've ever seen. My father adored my mom. His love for my mom was the meaning of devotion and their relationship was a testament of true love's rare beauty. He celebrated her every day and he truly could not get enough of her when he was next to her, couldn't stop FaceTiming her when he was apart. He would call my nonna up every day just to tell her, my wife is beautiful, my wife is bedda. In Florence, he woke up every single morning, he would wake her up with a cappuccino, music blasting in the apartment, usually cold heart, and he was in his freshest suit, not a hair out of place. He was his best self every single morning for her. He never left without kissing her goodbye. And in fact, that Sunday morning, he kissed her twice. She got two kisses goodbye. Their love is rare and I'm so grateful to have known their love. How lucky am I to know a love story so pure that I get to see as a role model. Their love created the family that we are today. Each of us carry a piece of him, shaping who we are and how we face the world. He instilled in us values of family, perseverance and love, preparing us to carry on this legacy. In each of my brothers, I see a glimpse of my father, his laughter, his determination, and even his name. It's the way we tackle challenges with resilience and the way we cherish family above all else. These are the values that we hold dear. I see your leadership and connection to your roots and traditions in my brother Peter and your calmness and gentle heart in Sal. I see your humor and vibrant personality in Joey, and for me, you're my twin. You're my dance partner for life. No matter what we do and how we show up, no one will ever fill your shoes. You prepared us. You taught us lessons that we need to survive to carry on your legacy. So with that, Dad, I make you some promises. Promise to stand by my brothers in all the chapters of their lives. 
I promise to encourage my brothers to achieve their dreams, follow their passions like you always have, to never give up. I promise we will never give up, Dad. Dad, I promise to take little Giuseppe on all the walks you didn't get to, to rough him up like you've been so ready to do. I promise to look for you and Giuseppe every single day because his smile is just as infectious as yours. He brings us calmness and peace. I promise to get all the boys together and run over to mommy to see who can give her the softest kiss each night. I promise to get mommy a cappuccino every morning and dance with her even if the neighbors are still sleeping. I promise to remind mommy how bedda his wife is. I promise to lay in bed with her and laugh watching TikToks until she's ready to sleep. And I will kiss her goodnight every single night like you did. But most importantly, Dad, I will continue dancing here. But I promise I'll save the last dance for you. I love you. Thank you. I apologize in advance, I'm a teacher, and uh, we usually don't stop when we get started. Uh, Giuseppe Barone, Giuseppe, Peppe, Pe, Joe Barone, Baru. If you really have known him, you've heard him say Joe Baroni, and for us, simply Dad. My father was many things to many people in this church today. A role model, a coach, a mentor, a leader, a visionary, a friend, a husband, a father, and his last role, nonno. When a new pope is selected, they are asked to take a new name as they are assuming a role that is larger than themselves. For instance, Pope Francis, born Jorge Mario Bergoglio, adopted a new name upon assuming the papacy. Similarly, my father's responsibilities in life demanded that he wear different hats and embody two distinct personas. He was both dad and Joe Barone. As his children, we always knew that dad was there for us whenever we needed him. Yet we also came to recognize that he had, he had another side, Joe Barone, whenever others required his assistance. Allow me to illustrate this with a simple story. When I was 12 years old, my father took me to a soccer game. We had to leave early because we had to go over the bridge and pick up a few teammates who lived in um, extreme poverty on the other side of the bridge. Before heading to the field, my dad made a stop at the famous Tutto Calcio on 18th Avenue. He told the boys they could choose any pair of cleats that they wanted. When I asked if I could get a pair, he replied, Peter, you're already fortunate enough to have your own. At the time, I was upset. I was angry. At that moment, I did not understand. But looking back, I realized they needed Joe Barone more than I needed my dad. Many of, you, many of you in this room have experienced this firsthand. Perhaps my dad stood in for your parents at parent-teacher conference. Perhaps he drove you to a club to try out. Maybe he was there at your graduation. Maybe he pushed you to go play for Carlo Tramantozzi and Gaetano at St. Francis instead of LIU. Joe Barone holds a unique significance for each and every one of us. When I needed my father, he swiftly transitioned from Joe Baron to dad. Whenever I required support or a sympathetic ear, he was there to listen. In one of the darkest moments of my life, I found myself wandering aimlessly. Lost and uncertain, I ended up in a Barnes & Noble bookstore. I had no idea what I was doing then. I called him. I confessed that I thought I made a mistake. I had recently switched schools and changed my professional path. It just did not feel right. Was I on the right path? 
Did I make the right decision? He stayed on the phone with me for hours. He told me that when he left Banca Monte dei Paschi, he risked everything he had. Despite his uncertainties, his determination and belief and his abilities reassured him that he made the right choice. This conversation will always serve as my guiding light when I'm faced with a challenge. We seem to measure life by the years lived, and unfortunately by that standard, 58 years on this earth, or precisely for my dad, 20,819 days, is too short. What if instead we measure Jobaron's life by the amount of lives he touched? From the children he raised, to the players he coached, to the children with disabilities whom he tirelessly supported so that they could momentarily forget their struggles. His impact was profound. He touched numerous lives, not only within this church, but around the world. In Firenze, I heard two words over and over again, humble and honest. My father was a humble man. In fact, in Pozzallo, they knew he was the director of Fiorentina, but they could never imagine just how important he was to that club. I'm sure the same can be said of his neighbors on 77th Street. Joe Barone was just a happy man who made pizza at the block parties and constantly had soccer balls falling out of his trunk. He never really told them about his accomplishments. He never boasted. For him, this position was a calling, not a title. I had people approach me in Viola Park and mention that despite being a driver or a janitor, he knew their name and would say hello and speak to them all the time about their family and kids. To me, it's crazy to think that somebody else would not do that. Unfortunately, not everybody in a position like his remains humble and honest, but he did. Marco Benassi shared his own reflection of my dad. Marco is a talented player, but he fell out of the plans at Fiorentina. My father and him got into a very public screaming match in his office. Many of you in here have been on the other side of that screaming match. I'm sure Carlo Acquista can tell you about that. But every day after the youth team finished practice, my dad played with Marco's son and made him, feel, and made him smile and laugh until he was picked up and taken home. That's just who my dad was. My family will never be whole again. Life is always going to be different without dad present. However, there are five pieces of him among us. Gabriela, who has his conviction to accomplish the seemingly impossible. Salvatore, who has a heart of gold and always sees the good in other people. Our brother Joey, who is full of life and make everyone laugh just like my dad did. My son Giuseppe, who has inherited his, father's, his grandfather's contagious smile. As for me, I believe I inherited my unwavering support from my mother, and I got that directly from him. What my father has accomplished over the past five years is nothing short of incredible. Only he could pull off the dream of Rocco Comiso and build the most beautiful and cutting edge Centro Sportivo in the world during a global pandemic and during a war in Ukraine. While those five years have gotten the most attention over the past few days, let us not forget that this church is full of those who have been around for the first 53. Before I close, I do want to say that a lot of people in this room had planned to visit him. And everyone said the same thing, I'll get there eventually. Eventually is gone. We cannot go to visit him just yet. I hope that you make that trip you call that loved one, and you hold your parents tight if you're fortunate enough to still have them. They say you die twice, once when you pass away, and the second time when your name is repeated for the last time. If that's true, then my father is immortal.
Trusting in God, we have prayed to Giuseppe. And now we come to our last farewell. There is sadness in parting, but we take consolation in the hope that one day we shall see Joe again and enjoy his friendship. Although we will disperse in sorrow, the mercy of God will gather us together again in his kingdom. Let us console one another with the faith we have in Christ Jesus. Into your hands, Father of mercies, we commend our brother Giuseppe in the sure and certain hope that together with all who have died in Christ, you will rise with him on the last day. We give you thanks for the blessings which you bestowed upon Giuseppe in this life. They are signs to us of your goodness and of our fellowship in Christ Jesus. Merciful Lord, turn toward us. Listen to our prayers, give paradise to Joe, but help us who remain to comfort and console one another with the assurance of our faith until we meet again in Christ and know with our brother forever. We ask this through Christ our Lord. Joe, may the angels lead you into paradise. May the martyrs come to welcome you and take you to the new and the eternal city, Jerusalem. May the choirs of angels welcome you and lead you to the bosom of Abraham. And where Lazarus is poor no longer, may you have eternal rest.